Daryl, when you think about like, you know, your days, man, at the U with Marion Barber, man, like, like what, what do you remember most about Marion? Well, just, just like you remember when I came in, I remember when Marion first came in and, you know, and, and, and we all do. We remember when Marion came in, he was a shy, quiet, um, quiet kid. You know, he, he had the, he had the body and the look of a grown man though. He, yeah. he already had a, he already had a, a college body, you know, and had looked like he had been working out for years already, but he, he was very quiet, very shy, very reserved. And he always, he always had his, his sweatpants on. He always had some gopher sweatpants on, you know, and he just, he just went about his business and he didn't really, you had to earn his trust. Oh, he yeah. was a person you had to earn his trust because he wasn't going to open up to everybody. Um, until you earned his trust and it wasn't, you know, until probably his second or third year that, you know, his personality started to come out and, you know, he, he trusted us enough to, to be himself, you know, and, um, you know, even, even after he became, you know, one of the, the greatest players in, at Minnesota and rushing for a thousand yards, he still was super humble, still um, very giving, very, um always full of full of laughter full of positivity always had a smile on his face i, I don't remember marion really ever being upset or mad at anybody or anything through, throughout the entire time that i knew him and even even when he went to the cowboys you know he i remember going to his house with a bunch of guys going to his house in dallas and and hanging out and him just being very giving and inviting guys out or taking guys out and things like that. So um, great, great spirit, great spirit. And I, I know Ron, you have, you got the memory of an elephant. So I know you have, you have the stories. <laughs> I know you have some, some stories, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I got, I got, I got a bunch, man. Like y'all, y'all were a funny group of young dudes, man. Like I, I look back on that time with like Air Force Ones. You know, that was the big thing. It still is, but it was huge back then. And coming out of Detroit, that's all we wore was Air Force Ones. And I'll never forget Marion coming to me and uh, trying to show me, because his dad's from Detroit. And he wanted to kind of connect with me on the Detroit side. Like, hey, man, like I'm from Detroit too. And I really thought he was at first until his dad showed up one day. He was like, no, nah, I'm from Detroit. This dude's from like Wyzetta. You know, so, but that was Marion. Like he was always joking around, laughing, having fun. You're right. Like he was... He was, in my opinion, and I can say this, he was better than Tellus Redmond. But as a freshman, he was willing to play the back seat to a guy that he probably, you know, felt like I'm better than this guy. But, you know, Marion never once, you know, cried or whined or said anything to the coaches about I should get the ball more. You know, when he split time with, with Lawrence Maroney, I remember coming back and uh, talking to him, same thing. He never cared. He's like, man, look, we're going to go out here and win. That's all I care about. And, uh, yeah, man, he was a he was a giving guy. Uh, but y'all were funny, man. Y'all were y'all were a funny group of, of guys. Like just just the constant locker room jokes. Uh, the the because I was number three, he was twenty one, so he was like right down the line um, of our lockers. And so it's just we always like there was always something going on over there. Like some and then Greg White was kind of right there in that corner. And so Greg always, I mean, I can't even tell how the Greg Greg stories. Like it's some of the stuff he did is not not made for TV, right. but it was just literally constant laughter. Uh, constant fun and so you know to, to read Marion senior or junior sorry his dad's comments about what Marion wanted with his life you know how he wanted to to, to be remembered um, that's what I'm going to do that's my goal the next like couple weeks man and my show is always find a way to pay tribute to Marion because um, you know he 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 lived a life that he wanted people to remember and not worry you know and I think everybody was so worried about what he thought or what was going on and Marion was in his own kind of world. Like I'm, I'm good. I just got to figure this thing out. And so that's what I'll always remember. Marion was that guy. He was. Well, you're right. He, he didn't trust people. Like he, you had to earn his trust. You had to show him you were legit. Like you're not gonna turn on me. You're not gonna tell on me when Coach Mason walks in the locker room. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. And, and then once, once that happened, like just hearing all the stories. Coach Mason has some stories. Tony Patterson's coming on later this week with some stories. Terrence Campbell is coming on. So yeah, man. Everybody that you see even Tony Romo for the Cowboys you know he he said something cool about Marion as well and that that's who Marion was um last one before I let you go Daryl um winning a Super Bowl when you think about that you know the 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 that's the that's the ultimate goal 
You know what I mean? That's the, I, I'll never forget you coming to my wedding uh, with, with your Super Bowl ring. And I'm not going to tell that story, but, you know, like Wokey and all the friends, Dana, Tasha, everybody, you know, Lawrence, everybody's going out. And all I heard was, man, Dale Reed, man, he blah, 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 this, is this, he, you know, the bar, the, the bartender asking these questions, he got the Super Bowl ring. Um, but when you think about winning the Super Bowl, you know, you tech another gopher, he was with you on that. Um, what can teams, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's about getting to the playoffs first. And then it's about, you know, leadership from the top. What can a team like the Vikings do to finally get over that hump and win a Super Bowl? And, and, and shouts to Ed Donatella that, uh, he was a defensive coach when I was in, in Denver. So I'm very familiar with him, his system and, um, how he likes to play, how he likes to coach. And uh, I think he's going to be really good for the Vikings. Uh, you know what? Well, let me give you that one then. What 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 can Ed Donatel's defense, what can Vikings fans expect from an Ed Donatel defense? It, it, you can expect that they're, they're going to be full of surprises and um, they're going to be unpredictable. And and especially with, with some of the pieces that the Vikings have, he'll be able to move those pieces around and have those guys flying around and, I believe the Vikings will be able to put up points on offense and they just have to, they have to get stops. They have to keep teams, you know, from scoring on defense. And um, I, I remember in Denver, we started off and um, it was a new culture. So <laughs> um, Josh McDaniels, who's now the, the Vegas Raiders head coach, it was his first time as a head coach when I was in Denver. So mm -hmm. he brought in a new culture to Denver and, you know, that's when, you know, Demarius Thomas, rest in peace, was drafted, and Tim Tebow and uh, Noshawn Moreno and Brian Dawkins came over, and Champ Bailey was already there, and um, Elvis Dumerville was there, and we started off six and zero that season, six and zero. So teams did not know what to expect from us, and and we caught a lot of teams off guard, a lot of good teams off guard um, mm. when, when we had that six and zero run. Um, I got hurt in the seventh game, so, you know, things went downhill from there, you know, in my mind, it's, you know. But um, I, that's what I expect. I, I, expect the, I expect the Vikings to start the season off really hot. You know, how, how they finish, we'll, we'll see. But I think, I think they'll start off hot, you know, with, this, with, with the new head coach and, and the new defense um, going from a 4-3 to a 3-4, um, big change. But I think they're bringing in the pieces that fit that defense, and and they'll start off hot. And maybe they needed a a, a different culture right now. You know, um, I, I think it was time, and, and and they they needed that to be able to take a take that next step because they have a pretty good they have a pretty good core. Well, appreciate you, Daryl, joining me on the Ron Johnson Show.